Welcome to another episode of Talk and Shop live from Inside ETFs. I've got my buddy Brendan Maluli with me. Uh, we are actually speaking on a panel together tomorrow, uh, moderated by Rick Ferry, about pre uh, preparing your business for moving to the next generation. So making sure that your financial planning firm is ready to work with the younger generations as they inherit money or get to the point of um, accumulating their own wealth. And we were just in a couple panels that were talking about why advisors should be doing content. And I looked over at Brendan and I was like, hey, uh, we already get this, so let's go make some content now and do a video. Right on. So um, I'm pretty excited for tomorrow. I'm sure you are too, Brendan. Yeah, first time uh, doing a panel and, and pretty happy to have you uh, up there with me. It'll, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be good. Now we both have parts of our business that are geared towards young professionals, which I think is not normal in the industry. So I'll turn the mic over to you and kind of let you talk about what you guys are doing at Maloli mm -hmm. for the next generation, which will tie into our presentation tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, first and foremost, I think one thing that we're doing uh, that is kind of unique in our space is, is the advisory team. So we serve our clients as a team, and so we have my dad, who is a veteran advisor, mm -hmm. and myself, and my brothers, Tim and Casey. Um, and I think that that, in and of itself, helps to make people feel more comfortable uh, when they come to us and we're doing a financial plan for them. Mm -hmm. uh, the estate planning they can see that there's gonna be continuity. Like we could realistically create a financial plan for them that is going to not only get them through their entire retirement, mm -hmm. but if we do planning for their heirs or people they're gonna leave money to, they could feel pretty comfortable uh, bringing them into the conversation too with us because we're still going to be there. Right. There's, there's going to be continuity in the firm. And I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's just me right. as far as planning goes. And I would say if I was putting myself in the position of a client, in a, even a younger client, coming in to see you and Tim and Casey, and then I see your dad, mm -hmm. honestly, I would feel pretty good knowing that, okay, these guys are my age, so they get what I'm going through. Totally. But they've also got dad that's been through a lot. That makes me feel good that I've got the best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, I don't have that. Like my, my community now is FinTwit. It's you guys. Yeah. Uh, but that's a good advantage to have. And I think that you mentioned it more for the older clients, but I think there's a benefit to having dad there yeah. um, as well, even for younger clients. No doubt. Uh, experience speaks volumes, but I, I think... Uh, you're selling yourself short a little bit here. I think you are young enough to the point where you're probably creating financial plans for people who you are. You could see them through right. uh, 30, 40. Like, how, how long? How long are uh, are you going to work? I mean, I, honestly, could, I say, I, honestly, you, I see you myself doing it forever. Yeah, yeah and so. I, I also, I think that because you're what 28. Yeah. And I'm, I'm turning 37 tomorrow. tomorrow. But as I sit here next to you, like, I think that you're my peer, but I'm actually like way older than you so that's part of my struggle too is there are young clients that i'm bringing on that are your age mm -hmm. and i am a lot older than them mm -hmm. um, so i do have that experience as an elder advisor just in a different capacity as your dad right. um, so what you were telling me beforehand that you guys are kind of rolling out or you have rolled out some new program for the young professionals yeah inspired uh by by you uh, I, I would say since we are uh, talking pretty regularly yeah uh so your wealth fusion program uh works as a retainer style fee mm -hmm. And we're going to roll that out too. And one of the primary reasons was because last year we were doing uh, you know, basically flat fee for financial planning services for some of our clients. Mm -hmm. We primarily do assets under management fee, but uh, we were doing this in addition to it. And in a test, we felt like it put a lot of pressure on us and the clients mm -hmm. to come back and have the meeting capital T, capital M. I like how you said that. Yeah, and, and like it makes everybody feel like we have to discuss every single facet of a financial plan at one sit down. Because and they're afraid that when, that when that sit down's over, they've paid you their flat fee, you, you're not gonna talk to them again, yes. right? Yes, and we tried to make it very clear, like mm -hmm. look, we're not, we're not gonna begin billing you if you have a small question and, and you're coming back to us mm -hmm. for it, but it just didn't, it, it seemed to miss. And so we like the idea of the retainer style fee because it's going to be a program where we're building out the entire financial plan, but we're kind of, we're, we're going to have uh, the clients prioritize areas of planning that they would like to hit on first. Mm -hmm. And we're going to work our way through all of them mm -hmm. uh, over the course of 12, 13 months working together. At that point, uh, you know, if they want ongoing advice still, it would be a monthly retainer charge as, as uh, your Wealth Fusion model does. But 
we, you know, we're, we're going to give it a shot. And I know you can speak to uh, how, how that's worked in your own business. I mean, And I'm obviously excited to see other advisors adopt that model. And I don't think it's the right model for every business and for everybody. Mm -hmm. But I told you before, I think it doesn't hurt to have that available. And I do think that it makes sense for certain clients. And then eventually, my thought and my view is they're going to outgrow that. And then they're going to go into the more hands-on financial planning relationship that I do with my older clients. Right. And they're going to pay me more, but there's a difference between that subscription model, retainer model, and the AUM model. There's yeah. more meetings, different portfolio management, a different level of service. Fundamentally, they are the same planning techniques. Fundamentally, they're the same investment principles. They're right. just executed at a lower cost point so I can offer to young professionals, mm -hmm. grow with them, and then have that next step when they need more. I think the, the point being, though, that you and, and our firm, hopefully, we can work with this, this uh, cohort of people who right. are largely underserved by our industry. Yep. Uh, and I don't know, I think it's, uh, I, I think it's a lot to, to ask to turn away business like that now mm -hmm. and then expect them to come back later and say, hey, now that, now that I have enough money, why don't you work with me? Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we just have a business model that can serve that, that you know, age group, mm -hmm. that uh, group of people who don't fit into the traditional assets under management model that so much of the uh, industry is doing. So I think to have both offerings, um, it, it allows you to work with a generation that a lot of people don't want to. Quite and my, my and closing thought on that is I see my battery light flashing and I don't want to lose this. <laughs> my closing thought is I, I fully believe and truly believe that the young professionals that we help today will stay with us when they accumulate that wealth, when all the other advisors now want to work with them because we worked with them when they didn't have anything mm -hmm. and they have that wealth partly beyond their own, you know, their work ethic and everything, but also for the planning that we did. So um, I've said this before in another podcast or another one of these videos that I remember telling somebody this business model and them saying, that's great. And when they grow up and they need a big boy advisor or a big girl advisor, they're going to come to us. And I don't think that's going to be the case uh, because of the way you s we're structuring our relationships. So, uh, before we die, Brendan, thanks for taking the uh, time to do this. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and if you're excited. watching this while you're at Inside ETFs, because I'm about to chop this up and get it out there, make sure you come see us um, at our panel with Rick Ferry at 2.50 yep. in the afternoon. Um, so thanks for watching. Brendan, thanks for doing this. And we'll see you in the next episode.